This module talks about testing of hypothesis for single mean. For one sample t-test, which is designed to test whether one sample of data differs from a standard value or a population mean. So when a researcher is interested in the mean value of a certain population, let us say that mean age of this population is different from 30 years. So if an estimate of the population standard deviation sigma cannot be developed prior to the sampling, we use the sample standard deviation s to estimate sigma. Here, we will discuss a case when population variance is unknown. For one sample t-test, we have three important assumptions. First, data are interval or ratio level, which means that it's a, it should be a continuous variable. Data has been taken as a representative randomly selected sample. So randomness assumption is very important. And thirdly, the sample belongs to a population that follows a normal probability distribution, which is a normality assumption. When we are testing single population mean, we wish to test H0, whether mu is equals to mu0, which is a predefined value, mu0, against the alternative that mu is not equals to mu0. If we write this set of hypotheses, our test will be con considered as a two-tailed test. But one can also carry out one-tailed test where the hypothesis could be that H0 mu is equals to mu0 or mu is less than equals to mu0 against the alternative hypothesis that mu is greater than mu0. Or H0 mu is equals to mu0 against the alternative hypothesis that mu is less than mu0. The second step in the process of testing of hypothesis for single mean is to state the level of significance. In this case, we will state the level of significance alpha to be 5%, that will be 0 0.05. And the third step is to state the test statistic. One can use the interactive flow chart that we discussed earlier to make the decision that which test statistic should be used. And since this is a special case where we are assuming that the population variance is unknown. Hence, t-test provides an exact test. So if x1 up to xn be a random sample from a normal distribution with unknown mean and unknown variance, then the quantity t equals to x bar minus mu over s over n root n has a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. The fourth step is to state the decision rule. Decision rule can be written in two approaches. First is using critical region approach. So it all depends upon our alternative hypothesis. If our, our alternative hypothesis states not equal, which means it's a two-tailed test, then our rejection criteria for fixed level test will be the T naught, which is a calculated T statistic, which should be greater than T alpha by two, N minus one, which is the percentage point from the T distribution with N minus one degrees of freedom. One should know that it's, since it's a two-tail test, here we're going to talk about the upper tail as well as the lower tail. But if the test is a one-tail test, where alternative hypothesis will either be greater or lesser, then the p-value will be calculated by calculating the probability above t naught. If alternative hypothesis is greater, and if alternative hypothesis is lesser, the p-value will be calculated using the probability below t naught. And the critical region will be defined as t naught greater than t alpha and minus one. One might notice that for two tail test we use t alpha by two, but for one tail test we use t alpha only. And likewise, when h h one is mu less than mu naught, t naught is less than minus t alpha and minus one. So the decision rule in the critical region approach can be defined through this bell curve, where minus t alpha by 2 n minus 1 will be on the left side of the tail, and t alpha by 2 n minus 1 will be right on the right tail. And likewise for one tail test. But if we are using p value approach, our decision rule states that we reject h naught if p value is less than or equal to alpha. Then we calculate a value of test statistics using the information taken from the sample. 
And finally, we state conclusion, statistical conclusion as well as application conclusion. Let's take an example where we have the data about the number of days until MRI for subjects with MCL and ACL tears. This data has been obtained from Nakamura, who studied subjects with medial collateral ligament and anterior cruciate ligament tears between Feb 1995 and December 1997. They collected 17 consecutive patients with combined acute ACL and grade 3 MCL injuries were treated by the same physician at the research center. And one of the variables of interest was the length of time in the days between the occurrence of the injury and the first MRI. So the data given below, we, we wish to know if we can conclude that the, the mean number of days between injury and initial MRI is not 15 days in a population presumed to be represented by these sample data. Taking out some necessary information from this statement, firstly, we got to know that what do we desire to test? And we desire to test that if we can conclude that the mean number of days between injury and initial MRI. So we our interest is in observing the mean average number of days. The other thing, important thing is to note that whether we are going to talk about equal, not equal, greater than, or lesser than. And here it clearly states that the number of days between injury and initial MRI is not 15 days, which means it's not equal to 15 days. That could be more than 50 days, or that could be less than 15 days in a population presumed to be represented by the sample. So using this data, we will be able to conclude that the mean number of days for the population is not 15. So if we reject the null hypothesis, that the population mean is equal to 15. Hence, the data consists of number of days until MRI on 17 subjects as previously described. And the assumptions that we will test is that the subject constitute a simple random sample, that is randomness is confirmed from population with the similar subjects. And we assume that the number of days until MRI in this population is approximately normally distributed. But we will carry out this test. So our, our hypothesis states that the null hypothesis mu is equals to 15 against the alternative hypothesis that mu is not equals to 15, which shows that it's a two-tailed test. We state the level of significance alpha to be 0 0.05. Our test statistic is to be decided and appropriate test statistics. So we'll first test the following assumptions that the variable to be interval or ratio, since it's this variable is a continuous variable and it's a ratio variable. Second, sample to be randomly selected from the population. It clearly states there that the sample is randomly selected. And thirdly, the population distribution is normal. So here we will proceed to SPS this, to test for the normality assumption and make further calculations regarding the normality as well as the testing for the single mean. To test the normality assumption as well as to carry out a test for the single mean in SPSS, we'll enter the data as one variable in the column. Now, firstly, testing the normality, normality assumption, we go to analyze, descriptive, and explore. We bring our variable into the number of days until MRI. We click on both. Here in statistics, one can calculate descriptive statistics. One can calculate histograms, normality plots with test. Right now, we're going to use the inferential methods to test for the normality. Hence, we will use Shapiro-Wilkes test to make decision whether the distribution is normal or not. Since for the test of normality, we got to state the null hypothesis to be that the sample comes from the population that follows the normal distribution against the alternative that sample comes from the population that does not follow the normal probability distribution. With the same level of significance we are using to test for the mean. So alpha is equals to 0 0.05. With test statistic stated by Shapiro-Wilkes test, which is a W statistic, and the decision rule that we reject the null hypothesis if p-value is less than or equals to alpha. And in this case, the p-value that is denoted by the significance value is 0 0.384 which is not less than equals to alpha, that is 0 0.05. Hence, we can conclude that the normality assumption holds true, that the sample comes from the population that follows the normal probability distribution. 
Using this information, we can conclude that our third assumption holds true. So it's very appropriate to use one sample t-test in this situation. So moving further to perform one sample t-test, we'll go to analyze, compare means, and one sample t-test. Here, our test variable is number of days. And our test value comes from our null hypothesis, which states that mu equals to 15 against the alternative hypothesis that mu is not equals to 15. So our test value is 15. We state our level of significance. And here in SPSS, we got to put out confidence interval percentage. If our confidence interval percentage is 95%, it means alpha is 0 0.05, which is 5%. And simply we press OK. We get this output with two tables. The first table talk about one sample statistics and other table talks about one sample test. In one sample statistics, it's the number of days until MRI, we have 17 observations with mean 13.29 and the standard deviation 8.887 and with the standard error of mean to be 2.155. So it performs the t-test and the value of the t-statistics used is minus 0.791 with the degrees of freedom that is 16, it was n minus 1. And since it's a two-tailed test, we use the p-value for the two-tailed, which is 0 0.440. Here it clearly states that, using the decision rule, that we reject H0 if p-value is less than equals to alpha. In this case, p-value is not less than equals to alpha, rather it is greater than alpha. Hence, we can say that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we fail to reject the null hypothesis for the mean, to be equals to 15. We say that it's true. Hence, we can conclude that the average number of days until MRI equals to 15.